Hey, what's going on guys? Flick here and welcome back to another episode of our Career Mode Road to Glory with Thou F. Bay Stuttgart. I do want to start off today's episode by answering a press conference of yours from JD and he asked how long I think we can keep our unbeaten streak alive and I'm just basically looking to keep it going as long as possible. I'm not really mentioning this to the players, we're just playing our game and I think we've cemented ourselves as the favorites in the league so far in the second Bundesliga. We're absolutely dominating teams. Teams, and I want to keep that going as long as possible. But of course, I do want to unveil the poll results from the previous episode where I asked you what goal you felt deserved our August goal of the month and what player deserved our August player of the month. And by a pretty large margin, Daniel Ginczek's goal in the Deutscher Pokal did win goal of the month. I wasn't too surprised to see that considering the importance of that game. Our future in the Pokal was on the line. He stepped up big to give us the late winner. However, I was surprised to see that Gettner did not win the popular vote for player of the month. Rather, it went to Genchek, and I think that's something I need to factor into this career mode. I foreshadowed this a little bit in previous episodes where I was questioning who should be our starting striker. Should it be Tarota, who's currently our starter, or should it be Genchek? And I'll leave it as a poll question right now. Who do you believe should be our starting striker going forward? Tarota, I would say, has been in slightly better form, but Genchek, with the limited play time he has had, he has been bagging goals, he's the younger player, and he has more potential. So keep that in mind as you cast your vote. All things considered though, I think it's without question that Genchek completely deserved the inform card he received for his August performances. Let me know what you think about the rating and whether you would have changed any of the stats. Before we get into the scheduled portion of today's video, I want to give you guys a breaking news update from the south of Germany and Stuttgart has released a statement that the club and Kevin Grosskreutz have decided to part ways and it's a pretty unfortunate situation. Grosskreutz was involved in some sort of altercation on a night out but there are rumors that the issue may lie deeper than that. To be honest I was surprised by the decision but these sort of things do happen and it leaves us with an interesting predicament for this crew mode and what to do with Kevin Grosskreutz as a player and the way I see it, there's three options available to us. First off, we could release him from his contract as soon as we have that budget available. Second, we could put him up on the transfer list during the January transfer window. Or third, we could continue playing him in this career mode uh, because it doesn't necessarily need to reflect what happened in real life. This is a video game after all. So I'll have a poll option in the top right. Let me know what you guys think we should do with Kevin Grosskreutz. With the summer transfer window complete, I think now's a great time to give a slight recap on what happened for us during the summer and what kind of transfer deals we did make. And we made a total of three transfers, bringing in Toski the center back, Coyote the striker, and also Hansen the center attacking mid that we did sign on loan with a future fee attached. With us now going into September, we're not going to be able to make any more signings until January. That's a long way to go, so we're going to have to be focusing on our youth scouting to make sure that we're bringing in fresh players into the club and that this career mode remains enjoyable for you guys. So let's focus on the episode at hand and then we'll touch a little bit more on that youth scouting aspect. I am interested in simulating more matches now that we're out of the transfer window and we will be simulating this match against Braunschweig because we did play them in the Pokal. I don't like playing the same team too many times, but we have a couple of crucial fixtures here against Düsseldorf who are doing well in the league, Bosham who are also doing well in the league, and this match here on the 30th against Würzburg, which means I will also be simulating this match against Greuther Fourth. We did purchase the Scout Future Star feature in the previous episode and our Scout has now returned and we'll be able to take our first look at our high potential young player and Eusebio Nunez is a 17 year old striker from Argentina, 5 foot 9, left footed with an overall of 56 and potential of 72 to 94. I'm liking how he looks already because the thing that sticks out to me is he has that winger speciality as a striker, which means he's going to be quick and that's something that is usually lacking for these youth academy players. So I'll let him develop in the youth academy and hopefully we can promote him to the first team within a couple of weeks. Fabian Winter is also not doing too shabby. He's keeping the higher end of that potential. Although he's not 94 anymore, he's 72 to 92 and I'm hoping he can stay at least around 94's potential. Stick Sticking with the theme of you scouting, we have a monthly scouting report attached. This one will be from Germany and we have a lot of players to look through. So let's get started and see if we can find any high potential youngsters to add to the Youth Academy. Already we have a 71 to 94 potential player. However, his value is on the lower side of things which lets me know that his overall is not too high. So for now, I think I'm going to be passing on him 
and the minimum threshold going forward will be a hundred thousand due to our limited budget and we can only have so many players in our youth academy we'll also take a look at this guy 79 to 94 potential but unfortunately once again the value only at 80,000 so we'll be passing on Marcus Hoffman and hopefully we can find another one Daniel Kuhn 76 to 94 potential 53 to 71 on the overall that's more like it and his value is definitely up there with 350,000 so I think this guy might be a future star similar to the ones that we already have in the youth academy and of course I will be signing him up and we have one more Mikhail Schinkel and 79 to 94 300,000 on the value we'll be also signing him up to the youth academy now you might have thought we'd be done with youth scouting but that is not quite the case I've been sporadically checking the last allotted slot that we have available for our youth scout and we have a five star five star scout available from France and guys I'm willing to take the four million hit on our budget because I think youth scouting adds so much to this road to glory career mode and I want to have as many scouting reports available to you in every episode. So we'll be signing up this French scout and dispersing him. For this first scouting network, I think I'll be staying in his home country of France looking for a physically strong player. But once this scouting network comes to an end, as well as the ones that we have ongoing, I'll be sending the scouts around the world addressing that running list I have going of countries that you all have suggested. If you haven't yet suggested a country, I'd recommend going in the comment section now and doing so. Considering we haven't yet done a squad report in this crew mode, I felt like now a great time to do so because the player ratings are refreshed and we can take a closer look at the individual player stats and since we have such a young team we're gonna see a lot of green in this squad report but unfortunately Christian Gettner down minus one in his stamina down minus three in his finishing and he will continue to decline throughout this crew mode but I think he can make it throughout this season he'll stay as the captain I'm not gonna bench him just because he is declining a little bit um, but moving on, I do have some exciting news for you guys. And Burkai Oskar now has a player face. He was one of the 2,000 players that EA updated the player faces. He went from being a silhouette to now having one. So that's fantastic news. I feel like he's going to play better in game because it's one of those mental things where if a player has a player face, they just play better. For this month's player training, I've decided to maintain a bit of consistency, but also rotate around some of the players. We'll be featuring Baumgartel, Pavard, Hansen, Oskar, and Coyote for this month. Our first simulated match of the episode will see us face Eintracht Braunschweig who are not in the best of form and they're familiar opponents so I have a strong feeling that we'll be able to win this match. An early yellow card received for them but 30 minutes into the match we get a goal from Maxime. Great to see him scoring a brace before halftime but the deficit is cut in half in the 43rd minute as we move forward. A couple of substitutions by the Eintracht Braunschweig side. We're deciding not to make any options but Trota looks to seal the deal with an 80th minute winner and we win this match 3-1. to one. Before hopping into this match against Dusseldorf I do want to see what the lead table is looking like and it's extremely competitive. Currently three teams on nine points. Dusseldorf in seventh place and we'll be looking to keep our perfect record alive and keeping that goal differential as high as possible. One thing I have been enjoying about this Road to Glory being in a German league and not English league is that we don't have as many cup competitions to play and as such our players are fully rested. I've decided to give Ginchek the nod to start at striker and also decided to give Asano the start over Werner because I've seen a lot of comments asking for me to play him more. I've been hesitant to do so considering he is a loney from Arsenal but I do rate him as our best current left mid and I do want to develop him over the season in the case that we decide to sign them on a permanent basis next year. In terms of the quality of their side, I would consider Dusseldorf to be one of the stronger teams in the second Bundesliga. A couple of recognizable names and a few to watch out for. Dusseldorf have shown signs of being threatening on the attack, but our defense has been solid, intercepting those kind of passes. But we need to get forward and get on the outlet, and we just can't seem to get out of our own half right now. It's Bellinghausen. Surely he's going to be looking to cross. It's Grosskreutz trying to body him off, and Baumgartel has to make the big header clear. Let's get forward and get it on the attack, boys. Asano, just the player who I wanted, showing some of his pace, hopping by a defender, and he's got Maxime. He'll look to play to him, and maybe the five-star skiller can get one more attack going. We do win a throw-in from a decent position in the 40th minute. Asano was the intended target, but now it's Nsua. 
looking for Ginchek in the middle. It could be a fake shot to set up some space. Ref, that's a pen. And I don't know how many penalties we've gotten so far in this career mode, but we've been extremely lucky. I hardly ever get them in any game mode aside from career mode, but regardless though, we'll look to let Gettner take this one. He's been our allotted penalty kick taker. And he hasn't missed so far. We'll try to put this one off to the let left and see if he can put it away in the corner and Gettner has been foolproof so far it will give us the 1-0 lead today and hopefully the first of many goals now although we scored that first goal that doesn't mean we're going to go into the halftime break with the lead they're still going to attack and we need to find a way to get those chances cleared Maxime loses hold of possession it's going to be Kiesewetter the American from the right playing to Hennings in the middle we're trying to guess where he's going, but we just can't seem to get the ball clear. And I thought that was the equalizer. We should be counting our lucky stars that we did not concede right there. The halftime statistics are anything but dominant for us. We do have the one goal to show for it, but two shots, one on target, 49% of the possession. I would almost argue Dusseldorf had been the better side, uh, but our defense has stepped up big and Longrek made a couple of good saves. Only one change to make at the halftime break. Ozkan coming on with his new player face for Maxime. And there's Asano making the great run. Can he show the pace as well? He is completely stormed by the defender. And he's going to look to go cross body. If he could have capped that off with a finish on the far post. Man, that would have shown signs of brilliance. And I think that's just some of the eight experience coming into play. And here's Ozkan making the run. Just moments after. He'll play to Asano in the middle. One more pass to Ginchek. And again, some beautiful play. We just need the final finish. To mark it off with a goal, and Genshek needs to do better there. We got a throw in here from a decent position. Ozkan providing an option. We'll work this one around to Gentner. And I see that run by Afori. One more pass. We'll set up Genshek. This Dusseldorf defense is not letting us have anything. But Insua. We know he's quick enough to get by these defenders, but we'll try crossing it in. And it's a decent cross as well. Asano, of all players, rising up. Unerstahl, though, making a great save. But now the pressure's on. We're keeping the ball in their half. And I think it's time for us to tack on a second goal. And we're one through ball away from it. The first of two substitutes will be another player you guys want to see more playtime of. And that player being Bercalo coming on for Asano. And the second substitute, I think late in the match, we need to bring on a little bit of pace. Coyote still yet to score for us. Maybe this will be the match. Well, this is, again, a dangerous attack coming from Dusseldorf. A nice pass inside to set up Hennings. And near post shot saved by Langerick. He's so solid on his near post. And, you know, we've only conceded one goal all season in the league. And I think that uh, should definitely be justified by our defense and the play that Langerick has shown. Although he's not the best keeper, he's certainly not the worst. And I would rate him as a decent keeper and someone that could probably hang in next year. First, we'll have to deal with this cross. Toski again, clearing it with the header. The long shot attempt right at Langrek. This could be the attack we're looking for. And Ozkan, great run made by him. Coyote needs to present an option in the middle because Ozkan is not the quickest. Here we go, we'll play to Coyote. And now this is going to be Bracalo. Somehow he's still onside. Unfortunately, it's cleared away by Dusseldorf. But at this point, we just need to waste a couple of minutes. Only five minutes left in this match. But another attack by Dusseldorf. His boat sick. Running it down the right wing. Find Kiesvetter in the middle. This could be a late equalizer. And oh my goodness, a sloppy goal. And I thought Langrek had that covered. But now we have four minutes left. And we need to somehow manage to get a second one. I just wanted to take a closer look at what happened. And that's a tidy little flick by number five to set up the goal. One last corner kick to deal with. The draw wouldn't be the worst of things. It would still keep us top of the Bundesliga table. And we will get that one cleared. And that is enough to see out the match, guys. An unfortunate turn of events there with Dusseldorf getting the equalizer. But again, we'll take one point out of this one. A final look at the stats. And honestly, we didn't do enough to justify the three points today. Looking at the player ratings, it did go to Asana with an 8.2. And I'm glad I decided to start him and give him more playtime because he showed what he can do with a little bit more work on his finishing. He could be a spectacular winger for us. Following that match, we'll take a look at our first scouting report from Poland. And I think this scouting report really shows the difference in quality between a three-star and a five-star scout. Only three players to show far. Regardless, we'll see if any are worth signing to the Youth Academy, but that's not the case. Our next match will pit us against Bochum, but looking at the league table, 
Our competition really let us off after that draw. They didn't capitalize on the opportunity, and we still have a three-point advantage over second place, 1860 Munich. We'll show them all the way down in 13th, so this is a clear opportunity to pick up three points. This match will have quite a bit of significance to a few of our players, in particular Tarota, who spent the last two seasons at Bosham, so I'm sure he'll be looking to score a few goals against his former side. Following a rather disappointing match against Dusseldorf, I think the perfect remedy for our side will be playing with pride in front of our home fans. I don't know where our form has gone from the first few episodes because it's been all Busham so far in this match. And they just seem to be hanging on to all of the possession. We can't even get it cleared from our own half. Now it's Eisfeld. Looking to find a passing option. That's a nice through ball to set up Solozzi. He should be shooting from here, but Asano tracking back and able to get it cleared. This is one of our best attacking chances all match. And if we could just whip it across, that wouldn't be too bad. But Nsuin now pushing up, finding Gettner. And we're getting pushed off the ball. Busham have been the more physical side. And we need to find a way to change that at halftime. But before we change anything tactically, we need to find a way to get into the break. And Gettner looks to have picked up an injury, but he's playing on. That's what we like to see from the captain. And we'll see if we can play this one forward. Asano. Now finding Tarota in the middle. This is Maxime making a run. We'll try to spin this one inside. We've got a couple players on the far post. A nice one across. And that may be an undeserved goal considering the run of play. But Julian Green making the perfect run. And a perfect pass as well by Maxime. And we'll go into the break with the lead. That's not what I was expecting. But we'll certainly take it. I wish there was a better way to show it stats wise. But I think a good summary of the first half is it's been all Busham in the first two thirds of the field. Where they've been dominating possession. But they can't get a single shot on target in the final third and as such we'll go into the break with a 1-0 advantage. One change to make though is Gettner who is suffering from a slight injury. We don't want to risk anything and uh, prolong that injury so we'll take Gettner off and bring on Hosegai for the remainder of the match. That was nearly a mistake by a forward but he just got the pass off and maybe we can score from this chance. Tarota playing in the middle. Some nice passing play to set up a forward. Another back heel. Our fullbacks Providing an attacking threat and Klein looking to send in a final cross. We do win ourselves a corner kick and we'll take this one short with I think Maxime providing the option. Maybe we can just cross this one in. And skill dribble by the defender. Instead it falls to Baumgartel. A four on his left foot. We'll get that one on target and we nearly had a player blocking the goalkeeper. With 15 minutes left to play I just want to bring on some fresh legs to see out this match. And the first change being Emil Hansen coming on for Maxime. This will be his first appearance for Stuttgart. So I'm excited to see what he can do on the ball. And our final change being Manet coming on for Julian Green. The goal scorer for us and he certainly put in a great shift. Okay, that took a deflection right after the substitutions and all of a sudden it's 1-1. I swear, the matches that we are drawing this season are just ridiculous. I want to take another look at the replay and see who it went off of and what kind of lucky break Bosham just received. 90% of the time, I'm confident that Langerek can save a shot from that kind of range, but the deflection completely fooled him. Here we go, some decent play. To set up in Sua. If someone can provide an option in the middle. This is Asana. One more pass in the middle. And Emil Hansen was even looking to shoot that one. I'm liking the kind of positioning that he's shown so far. And again, he's in the right kind of place. And Hansen has provided an instant impact, boys. I'm excited what he can do for us. And we'll get a corner kick out of it. A four. He descended it in. A lot of space on the back post. And Asana with an open header. Should have done better. It's a corner kick for Bosham. We'll look to get this clear and get on one final counter attack. That's a good cross sent in, but Langerek just punches it away. And this is Tarota applying the pressure. Another cross whipped in. Toski winning the header. And we need to find an outlet, boys. We're just playing so poorly from the back. And Langerek continues to save us. Tactically, I would say that Bosham were the better side in the second half. They managed to get shots on target, which was their downfall in the first half. So fair play to them for picking up a point. But we need to find a way to do better in our final match of the episode. However, Maxime picking up man of the match with an 8.5. We do have news on the Gettner injury. He suffered a sprained ankle. He'll be out for three weeks, which means 
means we'll be calling upon one of our other center mids, might be Hulsa guy to get the start, might be one of our younger players that have yet to see playtime. Since we can't seem to pick up wins in the matches we actually play, we'll have to rely on results from our simulated fixtures, and this isn't a way match, so the odds aren't as likely, but Maxime, again picking up a goal, in the 17th minute, so he, I'm really liking the goal scoring tally that he's provided so far this season. I'm hoping he can continue uh, throughout the rest of the season, but 60 minutes in, still 1-0. We'll see if we can close this one out with a 1-0 result and 15 minutes left now. Pavard coming on for Toski and Maxime getting a brace in this one. Well done by him to lead us to victory. For this final fixture of the episode, we'll look to learn from the mistakes we made so far and close out the month with a little bit of momentum. And instead of starting Gettner due to his injury, we've decided to go with Gergic, who I think will provide a bit of a physical presence in the midfield. He's six foot two. He can play center defensive mid, and I think him alongside Afori will provide a pretty nice partnership. It looks as though the Würzburger Kickers, which might I add is a fantastic club name, are rocking a similar formation to us in the 4-2-3-1. We'll see which side is better. We just can't seem to get the ball off him, but Gurgic, good tackle by him and Asano. Showing some of that pace on the left. That is something that Werner does not have and Asano has shown in plentiful amounts. He's got to find the pass in the middle. He'll lay it off. This is Maxime! The finesse shot was headed for the far right corner, but unfortunately that one was deflected. So we'll get a corner kick from it. And Afori looking to send it in. We've got someone on the edge. This is Pavard. Finding the pass in the middle, but too many bodies in the box and we can't get a shot off. There's Pavard. You know, he might be a center back, but he can certainly play as a right back for us. And he's given us a chance to get forward on the attack. We're asking... Oh, Ginchek has done well to get by a few defenders, and I think he got taken out just outside the box. And this could be a red card because Ginchek was through on goal. Only a yellow card for the Würzburg player, and I think the captain should be very lucky that he didn't get sent off. Maxim on the free kick duties. We'll let him take this one on his right foot. Two bars of power, getting it over the wall and hitting the crossbar. So unlucky there. We do follow it up with Grosskreutz, but Würzburg get it cleared. Monet just looking to use some pace. Oh, we've got an open player here on the right. This is Maxime with acres of space looking to go crossbody. That's off the post. We have been so unlucky in this match, hitting the crossbar by Maxime and now hitting the post as well. If I'm being honest with you guys, today just feels like one of those days on FIFA where nothing is going your way, but we still have 45 minutes to maybe get the goal and put us ahead, pick up three points. As we start pushing forward to the later end of the match, I can tell that Würzburg are starting to pour forward players which I don't mind at all because I think the only way we're going to score in this match is from a counterattack, so that's what I'll be watching out for. Nice ball. And one more through ball to Ginchek on his right foot. We'll take the goal, boys. I wasn't even sure if Ginchek would be able to even get to that through ball, but he ended up running onto it. Wasn't the intended target, but we'll put that one crossbody. And Ginchek on his right foot has to be one of the more unstoppable strikers I've used this year. We fought hard for that goal, and now we need to make some substitutions to close out this match. I feel like I'm repeating myself saying that, but the last two times I said that, we ended up conceding and allowing for a draw. I intend on making sure that we win this match. Maxim will be coming out, Oskan coming in for him. Asano, not the best on stamina, so we'll be taking him off. And Werner coming on. We need to bolster up that midfield, so Hoskai coming on for Gurgic. Oh, this could be bad. They're running it down the right wing. And Tafratshopper sending it across. That's Grosskreutz winning the header. The shot going off the post. It's about time, so luck went on our side. And we need to see this one out for the last 14 minutes. Oh, please. Finish this one off. Genshek. He's going to get it on his right foot. A finesse shot from outside the 18-yard box, or actually the penalty box. And we're able to go up 2-0. Ginchek once again showing that when he gets starts, he gets golds. And it looks like we'll be getting the winner. Well, the keepers now come up for Würzburg. So if we can get this one outside the 18-yard box or outrun one of their players, then we should be able to put this one away, and it's Özkan who can pretty much walk this one into the net. That was so strange. 
But we'll take it, and we'll take the 3-0 victory. Why not? <laughs> What even was that goal? It's great to end off the episode with a solid outing, managing to secure 10 shots, 7 on target, and a 3-0 victory over Würzburg. Man the match, I would give it to Ginchek, and the game tends to agree with a 9.1 rating, sharing the highest rating with Ozgan. But guys, that'll wrap things up for today's episode of the Stuttgart Crew Mode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like down below. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. If you're interested, you can follow me on my social links that are provided in the description down below. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you guys again soon.